on the show we were talking about um, met we talked about bipolar disorder and um, ADHD and um, all that stuff. So I wanted to ask you, um, how do you know that someone's bipolar? Well, it's really important, especially if you're looking at um, bipolar type one. It's really obvious mm -hmm. um, because they get very psychotic and out right. of touch with reality and delusional, and um, you know think that they're different people or different things. So bipolar type 2 might be more difficult because mm -hmm. they might just be irritable or extremely social, outgoing, hypersexual, hyper-religious. Different issues uh, like trauma can look like depression or sometimes ADHD. It just depends. So you really have to have uh, the person diagnosed by a professional. So how do you treat bipolar disorder? What are the different treatments that you see or what, what do you like to do? Well the first thing is to really get them to trust me because the last thing they're going to want to do usually is medication. Right. So um, if they're not bipolar type 1, you know the severe type, then they probably don't have to be hospitalized. Usually they rarely if ever have to be hospitalized. But bipolar type 2 usually, I mean bipolar type 1 will usually have to be hospitalized. So sometimes I have to encourage them and encourage their family to get them into the hospital. Not always. Many times I get clients after they're, co they're coming out of the hospital. Right. And the first trick is to convince them about this diagnosis and get them to stay on their medication. I had a friend once who I was trying to help out and when she would get psychotic, she was bipolar type 1, when she mm -hmm. would get psychotic the last time she disappeared and I finally found her again. I said, well, what have you been doing? She goes, didn't you hear? I said, what? She goes, I was on Beaufort Highway naked directing traffic. <laughs> Was she really? Yes, she was. Wearing her socks. Well, at least she, her feet were warmer. I know. <laughs> exactly. Wow. But like many bipolar type 1, she wouldn't stay on her meds, so who yeah. knows. Maybe she's still directing traffic on Beaufort. I home. hope not. You have bipolar disorder. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Now, I have to say I'm bipolar type 2, and I have yeah. to say that because I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I don't right. want people to think that, although the psychologist we talked about still works too. But um, so type 2 means that... Um, Probably for me, I was probably bipolar as a child. Many times, like schizophrenia, people don't have the onset of the disorder until their 20s. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of times bipolar can start very early. For me, I think it was really early. Um, there's pictures of me just looking really mad and irritated. With bipolar type 2, again, you don't get totally psychotic. You might get really crazy and wild, yeah. um, party a lot, drink and do drugs a lot, not get high because the mania, hypomania, a little bit of mania, can keep you from getting high um, because it's stronger than the alcohol and drugs. What's the earliest that you've seen bipolar disorder? I know that in kids a lot it can be confused with ADHD and I know that recently a lot more kids are being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Well, I think it's it's hard to tell. Uh, one of the biggest differences, if you are if you have a child who's ADHD and they get really upset, within a few minutes to 30 minutes they can calm down and get uh, get calm and be okay. If you have a bipolar child, sometimes we're talking hours of them being able to sustain that anger and that rage because of the mania. Right. So it's very hard to diagnose and usually even for psychiatrists. So you have to be careful, but they seem to be able to hold on to an emotional state longer, especially when, I mean, it's really hard to act and pretend like you're that manic. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to mimic it. It's really when they are that way and it lasts that long, that's one of the big indicators. With, um, again, with bipolar, they may get a little bit psychotic. So they may mm -hmm. think things like they're a different person right. or get paranoid um, you don't like me nobody likes me but to the point of you know severely being upset about it so it's it is really difficult to tell the difference and for me it would be a long long period of time that I would sort of assess them well let's talk about alcohol and drugs then for a second yeah, because let's do that I think they used to think years ago that if you had bipolar you didn't have you couldn't have an addiction right. but I think it's so important to say being a recovering addict myself that you can definitely have people that are bipolar that have both right. it's not exactly easy to assess and diagnose but you mm -hmm. can have both I think I've rarely if ever had somebody come in my office and say Susie I think I'm an addict or an alcoholic no one says that no one says that. That's why it's so difficult, and that's when you really need a family member because they have to hear from several different sources. That's mm -hmm. why we like to do interventions. 
I always have loved working with addiction because that's how I started out. And mm -hmm. my training is always the bottom line is addiction. And uh, it's rare that you see a psychiatric patient who doesn't have either an abuse problem with smoking cigarettes or overeating or something. So addiction really serves to get a fundamental clean brain. Then the second thing is the mood disorders, depression, and bipolar. And my probably my biggest love is uh, trauma. What do you think about medicate? What do you think about medication? I think that um, two things. Okay. And eventually, we're going to have the brain scans to show us this. Um, when, as you get older, if you need medication, and if you have a lifelong disability, like not a disability, but a diagnosis like bipolar schizophrenia definitely is going to yeah. need meds, severe depression, then you're going to have a better quality of life with medication. That's true. But for most people that are on medication that's the right medication, it's not, it's not like being on medication, it's like being normal. A lot of people are anti-meds, but if we take a scan of your brain and, and we set it next to a normal brain and we have these big deficits because of the ADD or ADHD or the depression, and then we look at your brain on medication and it's normal, why would we ever, you need to function without meds. I don't care if you're depressed. Yeah. So, yeah. so I totally believe in medication. The medications that they use now that are antipsychotics are abs it's a miracle. It is absolutely a miracle. So the um, ability to function and now the connection from a schizophrenic to another person is still not the same as it is because I guess that's the limbic system. Mm -hmm. But that may or may not change. But with newer medications, it might. But before that, all we did was sedate them. So now they can function, they can live, they can cope. Some can work, some may never be able to work. So the biggest change in history has been antipsychotic medications for schizophrenic type disorders. You get a lot of bipolars because they get um, kind of psychotic when they get manic. They are they take um, antipsychotics and it helps. And we're even now seeing kids on some antipsychotics for the ADHD because it modulates and, and helps their brain just like some of the other drugs do. So, and I know people are against that, but, you you know, if you work with hundreds of them, it's a big difference than to just say in your head, well, it shouldn't be like this. So, you know, I, I think you need to sit around in my office and in other offices for months at a time before you say you should or shouldn't do medication. Tell us your philosophy on, on how you do your therapy, how you, when you see your clients, how you work with your clients. Well, the first thing is obviously to really establish trust. The first thing is I have to really make sure they have things, issues that I'm going to deal with that are appropriate for me to deal with. I don't work with schizophrenics. I don't work with certain personality disorders, um, except occasionally. So the first thing is for me to really know that that diagnosis is right. I tell my clients the first time they meet me, they need to be evaluating me to see if they feel comfortable. Right. So by the end of the first session, I should know diagnostically or, or critically if there's somebody that I could work with appropriately professionally and they should have a really good sense of my personality and whether or not they could work with me. I see adults with addictions, uh, that's everything from overeating to anorexia to alcohol drugs to gambling, you name it, mm -hmm. um, to codependency, children of alcoholics, and then of course the bipolar and the depressed and the anxious. And I love group therapy. That's my favorite. What kind of group therapy do you do? Well, almost always my groups are trauma. So once they get stabilized on meds, if they need meds, and because a lot of people come to me that don't need meds. So first, if they do, they need to be stable. If they're recovering alcoholic, they have to be sober for a while. And then the groups are primarily based on people who want to have a better emotionally connected relationship with other people. Tell us about um, where you work and all that stuff. You can do a little promo if you want. <laughs> Well, I'm in private practice uh, with your mother, and um, uh, we are with Comprehensive Psychiatric Care, so I love working with a psychiatrist because when I do get somebody who's bipolar, one or two, then I have got the doctor right there. Yeah. So um, your mom and I both have our own practice, but we have the psychiatrist there to work with us in case we need it. So um, in private practice, you pretty much do, I mean, I know we're a college campus, so people may be interested in knowing that, you know, the great thing about private practice is you set your own schedule, you choose the kind of clients you want to work with, you do what you want, when you want. Now, it takes a long time to get to that place in your career, right? but when it does, you know, I do what I want when I want and with the clients that I love. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. I loved it. Oh, it was so great. much fun. I'm so glad that you came. Thanks.